yeah, we're talking about uh, Sunday meeting and Sunday is the day of the Lord, honoring the Lord. And uh, in my understanding, these are these these words are exoteric. It's for for you know religion, outer meaning, but um, the inner meaning. The all religions came from some um, conscious uh, awakened being, and uh, gradually it became um, after the that 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 master died. After some time, got spilled more and more into society and got got uh, disconnected from from its original meaning, and it at best became a civilizing factor on society. Because at best, Christianity and other things they, you know, cultivated some sense of care and kindness and love. Worst, you know, the Crusades and, and Inquisition and uh, stuff like that. So the inner meaning is the Lord, or the presence of God, or consciousness, or the Atman. I I, I find them as being synonymous and meditation through meditation is honoring the lord by being interested in the experience of our being you know the being is the being is that which is aware of these words right now the being is that which is aware of sensations in the belly the sounds. Yeah, the being generates all this flow of content, thoughts, feelings, sensations. So out of this being, uh, in a source, the source bubbles this all our life. Millions and billions of thoughts and feelings and images and sensations. And the being is perceiving this perceptions, like the being is aware of what it creates and the being remains once these thoughts and feelings, they bubble out or they fall back into the being, the being remains. So being or presence or awareness, uh, are interchangeably in these teachings. So let's start with a little bit of meditation. There are many um, uses of meditation. Now meditation, mindfulness has become very fashionable, I would say. So meditation for, and from one angle, uh, all of them are useful. So mindfulness for improving the blood um, circulation. Yeah, there are tests for that, improving the blood circulation, diminishing stress hormones, quieting the mind, uh, regulating the nervous system. These are all great benefits of meditation. I mean, even great CEOs or this kind of more, how do you call that, uh, pro progressive CEOs and all kind of people I heard today, some of them they meditate quite a bit and then they work hard and people they meditate quite a bit and then they work hard. So somehow they found that they can tune into this quiet space and less mind. And from there, they are recharged or creativity comes. So all of these are in my book, lower uses of meditation. And, and I, I love all the benefits and we can enjoy them. More like the higher um, benefit, <laughs> higher benefit and for true meditation is to, that we are exploring our aware being. We are exploring our being. We are exploring both, and our aware being has 
the teachings, they say there are two dimensions of our aware being. And of course, this is pedagogical. Um, so there's a dimension of that which comes and goes, that which arises and passes. So this ever-changing, what Buddha called um, the coming and going, the impermanence, everything comes and goes, thoughts, feelings, sensations, sounds. So this is the, they call it the phenomena, the phenomena, um, that which arises and that which we perceive. In meditation, we watch this stuff, we watch thoughts, we watch and feel energies in the body and we watch and hear sounds. So that's the phenomena. Usually when you, we are going to do it. I'm just going to give you the context, yeah? <laughs> Usually when you hear about mindfulness or even outside there, this magazine, Psychology Today, Psychotherapy, Psychology, they speak about mindfulness. Uh, or even going to Buddhist retreats or Zen retreats or Vipassana retreats, they are, their, their mindfulness or their, their witnessing of phenomena, it's about that, being aware of the phenomena somehow, and which is already a, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a good step in the right direction because in a natural state of, I broke my walking dead, uh, in the natural state of being uh, half asleep, our consciousness is, is identified with the phenomena. So it feels like we are the phenomena. I am every thought, I am every feeling. And because thoughts and feelings change all the time, it feels that it's unstable, uh, ups and downs. <laughs> um, because somehow one is sucked into seemingly into the washing machine. So and it's, it's stressful, it's uh, unstable. Okay, so, but there's another dimension in exploring our being. There is the dimension of the phenomena, which we witness. Uh, and then there's the dimension of that which is aware of the phenomena. That's very important. So it's not just phenomena, there is that which is aware of the phenomena. They even have a Greek name for it, the noumena, noumena. It's just a name to, to have a distinction. <laughs> so from when your phenomena arises and the noumena is that out of which things arise and that which perceives that which arises and that which remains, which is there all along. You know, because when we have a thought, the thought arises in this aware being and it is perceived by aware being and the thought fades away and the aware being remains. So uh, deeper uh, understanding or deeper application of meditation is to be aware of both the phenomena, be aware of it, but become aware of this awakeness, the awakeness which perceives, the awakeness which feels and hears. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not so easy to be aware of the awakeness that perceives if the mind is very active uh, or the nervous system is shot, is like uncomfortable. So, it's almost it's like almost like it's too many clouds to be aware of the sky. <laughs> Somehow it's too much stormy to be aware of the sky. Yeah, this this metaphor of sky and clouds. It it is used by the teachers to teach the relation between content and and consciousness, like content what arises and the field, 
consciousness, just like clouds move through the sky. But the clouds appear in the sky. From one angle, they are made of the sky and they, the sky remains. And no matter how bad storm is out there, the sky is never scratched or hurt or diminished by, by the storm. So in the same way, um, the noumena, that which perceives, is actually not hurt by any painful thoughts that appear in it or any painful feeling. Um, it's not. And of course, don't believe me, this is much more potent if we verify. Um, so by in meditation, by learning how to not get identified with the phenomena and also not suppress the phenomena, gradually the, also with some skillful pointers, we are pointed like, hey, okay, watch thoughts, allow feelings, but rest as that which is aware. Notice that when the thought, mm, the thought dies or passes, there's a little period of nothing, but it's not nothing, it's an aware nothing. It's a, it's a nothing that hears and a nothing that is aware. So that's called the gap. Um, yeah, so by somehow learning how to witness the phenomena and to not also suppress the phenomena uh, and learning about that there is something else, that which is aware, somehow in, the, in meditation, especially if we give it some time, there's some transfer of identity somehow. The, the feeling of oneself is transferring subtly, even if we don't know that it's happening, but we feel that I am more okay. <laughs> so there's, I, I have, I don't know, emotion and stuff and I can sit for like 20, 30 minutes and nothing changed externally, but it's more like a feeling of okayness. Uh, why? Because somehow we, by watching stuff, we are taking the stance of the watcher and the watcher is, because the watcher is unaffected by all this stuff, we feel more unaffected. Now there is a, <laughs> It's just at least to talk about it. There is a, um, in, in, this is more like in uh, awakening non-dual uh, teachings, non-duality teachings. This is not so much about processing. This is about being uh, uh, non-duality non teachings, which is what we are doing here is anchored in that. They speak about the, the, uh, another type of investigation like to look into the, the nature of that which is aware. Yeah, so not so much, okay, we look into the thoughts, feelings, okay, we are going to do that. But as the, as the mind gets more quiet, we can, we are encouraged to, to check out that which is aware. Usually, the awareness is looking, sees colors, or the awareness sees a thought, or sees a feeling. Somehow the attention goes out of awareness towards somewhere, outside of itself, goes somewhere. And in these non-dual teachings, especially this, this, this practice of self-inquiry, to look into to be interested and curious to investigate that which is aware. Uh, so by doing that, we need to turn the 180 instead of looking towards some object, even if it's subtle, we are kind of allowing the tension to fall back in itself and somehow to um, 
explore, investigate the presence itself. And this investigation, we are encouraged to do it along a couple of lines or the suggested investigation is to discover or to question. So the usual program is that it is me, Mihai, the body that is aware. You, the body that is aware. In these teachings, and it needs to be uh, checked out, it is not me, the body that is aware, it is me, awareness, that is aware of the body and the mind and the world. So for everybody, the sense of subject is me, the body, or me, the mind. Me, the mind. So that's why actually you can do meditation from this thing. Most people do meditation from, from the ego, which is still useful. Being like me, Joe, the body mind, I'm trying to witness stuff. <laughs> and that it does have some, some relaxation, some, some, it does have some good benefits, quieting of the mind, but we can go much further if we realize or have glimpses that it is not the body that is aware, it is awareness itself that is aware of the body. So now the body, instead of being the subject, becomes the object. And awareness is the subject. So this would be one step. Um, another step would be to, even if they are teachings, they are, they are talking about this, they are, okay, I'm the witness. However, we need to uh, explore and um, investigate. The assumption is that this witness is personal. It is the witness or the consciousness is personal and limited. Uh, so then therefore is like Mihai's little consciousness and, and, and uh, Maria's little consciousness. And we have like six there, five and two, eight consciousnesses here separated. And so, uh, Okay, so that's, that, that distortion might come into awakening teachings. So these teachings, they say actually that that is not true. And one needs to, to challenge that, one needs to verify that. Um, and the teaching says that through certain experiential investigations or methods, we are going to check and verify that there is no evidence that this presence is uh, personal or limited. There's no evidence. Uh, it is good to go for this investigation oneself, not to just believe a book or somebody. Uh, but anyway, long story short is that uh, these teachings, they are saying that actually this presence or this awareness which is aware of thoughts and feelings actually is not personal. It is not depending on the body. It is prior to the body. It is not that this presence is a product of the brain. It is actually the brain is the product of this presence. And they say this presence is not limited. And it is said that this presence, this aware presence there is only one aware presence in the universe. This is a big pill to swallow. But if you really swallow this pill <laughs> with understanding, that, that is a very um, uh, helpful <laughs> for happiness. Uh, yeah, so this is where they talk about this uh, uh, non-duality, meaning that there are not two, Meaning they are not two consciousnesses. They are not 10 million consciousnesses. It's just one thing here. One, there's just one reality and there's just one presence that has uh, many body minds. Yeah. So that presence is 
like a field in which all the cats and dogs and all the all the creatures and all the humans, Republicans or Democrats, and and all the aliens <laughs> from all the dimensions, they are perceiving through via this presence, which is God's presence. So now you know. Of course, this can be philosophical and all of that, but ultimately, this this uh, meditation and self inquiry are that's, that's the path. Okay, first, not get identified with the mind. Don't get identified with the feeling. Realize I am this awakeness. Realize this awakeness is not limited by time and space. Realize this awareness is. Um, it is uh, universal. Therefore, means that it's immortal and cannot be destroyed. And one of my teachers would say, well, if you really verify this, where would your suffering be? <laughs> uh, meaning that, and I agree with this, that at the core of all our personal suffering, and actually, at the core of our uh, mankind suffering is the belief that this presence is personal and limited and time bound and depending on the body and perishable uh, and separate, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't planning to go into all of this. But I know that we are doing a lot of somatic processing here and, and it gets really uh, oh, with this feeling and I can't be myself and I'm not good enough. And, like, oh, ooh. and it's really important to, 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 to look into all of that. And as long as all of this, all of that are there thick, the pain body, it's really hard to, it, there's not enough space to look into all these deep matters because it's too uncomfortable. Um, but I wanted to touch on this uh, because it is, from my point of view, it is true. It is true. And it's, a, it's an important um, aspect of the teaching. Usually I don't bring it early on because it's too abstract and it's like, you know, it's good to, to yeah, it's too abstract and may encourage bypassing or philosophizing. But as long as we are tackling the pain body and the somatic processing and all our limiting beliefs and all these things. Actually, it's important to tackle the, 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 this deep uh, uh, theory, let's say, that consciousness is universal and they go hand in hand. Okay, well, uh, since I talked here like that, People have some questions. So how about let's go into any, any questions about what I said so far. Uh, and then we can do a little uh, experiential. So David said that he wanted to take that pill. Yes. The pill, the big pill to swallow, yeah. <laughs> and somebody said, is trauma then an identification? the activated nervous system is trauma then an identification or the activated nervous system yeah that that sounds true to me and identification who is identified yeah yeah who who is seemingly identified with the activated nervous system it is the universal consciousness <laughs> the, the the it is the 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 real I, the consciousness is temporarily identified with that. Uh, and out of that, it believes now that the universal consciousness, like the, the God's consciousness, God, God, let's say, or source, expressed in the form of Mihai, body, mind, consciousness, believes now that I'm, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
which which is not true. Uh, it's just that the uh, the consciousness in this setting of un unaware of itself it runs programs, it runs programs of limitations that are painful. Yeah, but it's temporary. Uh, either either through processing, processing uh, it and it diminishes, or through the body dies, and then the nervous system goes, uh, nerve is not an issue and it remains just consciousness remains. I don't know how it works on the other side and all that. I guess it's not urgent. I have to wait. Any, anything on this things? This is anything on this? Any question or? Need of clarification about this? Yeah, can you go over that one more time about how um, how if, if we? It sounds like you're suggesting that we need to somehow separate uh, the witness from our personal suffering, and that if we're aware of that that the, if we don't identify the witness with our personal suffering, that can allow kind of space for. Or I don't know, just being and not not being identified with our personal suffering. Can you say that one more time in terms of what your what your teacher said? Yeah, I mean, from one angle, personal suffering suffering is due to uh, identification oh, right. of of basically the 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 what one of my teachers, non dual teachers, would say. Is that the first program? So before we go into I'm I'm bad or I'm unlovable or I'm something, some deficiency story, the first program is I I am the body, uh, which we get this by two or three, two or three years old. Uh, because we hit you hit yourself. It's like, ah! or something. Uh, and then also our parents believe they are body and then they treat us as being the body. So the first program, which is the deepest one to, is the first one. It's the, the, the where all the other stuff will link like a chandelier branches. But the main branch is that this, which is aware right now is is the body and is a, the, also the belief. Therefore, if that which is aware right now is the body, it means that also this thing, I'm a woman or I'm a man. I'm a man and I'm a woman. And I don't want to go into this feminist and all that, um, you know, like the, the divine masculine, the divine feminine, you know, it's all that I, I am cool with all of that, but the belief that I'm a, that I'm a man Actually, this will bring suffering, which means that I'm a person. So all of this, I'm a person, it, it means that I'm the body, which means that uh, it means that consciousness is in the understanding that it is limited and personal. And in that setting, they say it comes when consciousness is, is in that setting. What I mean by it's in the setting is just like water. Water can be uh, water, or can be vapor, or can be ice, or can be all that. But it's all water, so there are different, let's say, settings or temperatures of water. So consciousness that is at the temperature of believing that being the body, and when you say I'm the body, it's also I'm the mind, you know? So right. uh, then there comes with the pack, the, the territory that comes with that is that there is lack, sense of lack uh, and fear, fear of disappearance, fear of absolute disappearance and lack and a sense of incompleteness, uh, a sense of something is missing, something is wrong, which is of the existential nature because somehow our consciousness, which is uh, infinite, it's like in small shoes and it's tight. Uh, so that will be some major cause of suffering. But then on top of that comes uh, 
trauma, pain body, mommy, daddy, society. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But I guess practically you're asking, so now can you ask that again or? Well, it sounds like what you're saying is that if we're aware of the universal energy, that that's going to, um, that awareness of the pain body is going to kind of set us out of that feeling of limitation to some degree. Okay, okay, okay. I think we start first with the pain body usually. So this, by developing this ability to witness and, and observe, uh, we are diminishing the state of identification when I'm lost in the painful thought. I am this thought that says that I'll never have a good relationship or I am this feeling that says I hate you or I hate myself or something. Um, so through just even witnessing of phenomena, uh, and also doing it more, not just uh, a few minutes a day, uh, all those, the playlist with the tool practices that I have, they are meant to jumpstart this witnessing quality of ourselves. Instead of to be uh, uh, sticky, sticking to stuff. Um, so this develops this ability to not, not to fully uh, stick to our pain body and uh, the, to observe it that brings a little bit of um less uh, there's some there's some relief i can see oh wow it's not what i am i'm this this something is aware of it well right. and the more i'm aware of it then there's um it, and also yeah it, it's a little bit of it diminishes it diminishes or definitely it allows the possibility for us to do something about it. Um, if we are completely stuck to it, I can't understand the hand. I can't understand what I'm dealing with, but then if I'm able to go like this, I'm like, oh, wow, well, okay, there's this hand here. <laughs> it is kind of choking me. Okay, and you know, so we can observe the thing before is that the thing is me, like in Alien, uh, the movie. <laughs> I remember. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Then somatic processing. I am okay. I can witness a little bit. So now I am looking at it. it says it says this stuff. Uh, uh, I noticed it myself this weekend. Now I can't. I, I, I have to hide. But I can't share this uh, relationally. Uh, anyway, programs programs from childhood. Uh, I can. We can do some uh, A and D. Uh, or some uh, kid of the inquiries or some, there are different methods to, to explore the pain body intellectually and mm, to feel it. And in that process, it discharges a little bit. It becomes uh, weaker. We are metabolizing the pain body through being more aware. The Katole talks a little about that. But the limitation here is that if we keep doing that, working with the pain body and processing stuff and our childhood and all of that, that will bring some relief and some diminishing of suffering. But if we still believe I am, I am, I am this, I am the body. I am, I am the body. I am this limited personal awareness, which is perishable. Uh, that is, we are not re, we are we we can't enjoy the 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 full fruits of our work because we still have the existential right. fear of disappearance and the existential sense of lack mm -hmm. that that then we need then you know in the in the setting of consciousness of in that setting is the sense of lack and, and sense of something is missing and fear. We have no choice but to seek, to seek um, 
and what we seek, even if we don't know what we seek, we seek happiness. We, we seek happiness or okayness, seek peace, seek inner peace, seek to be like, ah, to arrive finally, you know? Ah. Uh, we seek that um, happiness, let's say, fulfillment. And, and then the, in the ego setting, uh, that is found in objects, like in a relationship, in a new car, in uh, objects, like people, events, substance, uh, yeah. So we, we go out there to merge with an object, either love of my life or, or, or a success or, or heroin, a good, a good clean heroin or something. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it, it seems like that will, that will promise us what we want by going outside. So that doesn't work. Yeah, so this, 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 it's teachings, they say that this uh, fulfillment, unconditional fulfillment and okayness and uh, love and, and, and a feeling of uh, everything is okay, even call it a desireless state, a desireless state. That is not outside, that is within the noumena, within the noumena, within the, the aware presence. But we, we are, first of all, we are not aware of our prayer presence, and then we don't stay too much with it. And so the, uh, yeah, we need to be, basically we need to be really interested in this aware presence. Another way to put it is to be really interested in our, what we are, like where am I, what am I? And if we are really interested uh, and we have this uh, like love, love of it, we are lo love of the truth, love of interest, that like you guys have some of that because otherwise you wouldn't be here. You'd be in church or or somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> okay, so but it's important for that love of ourselves and love of truth to, to be fed and nourished, and then it grows. It grows because you actually you start to feel better. You're like, oh wow, this is cool. Oh wow. Oh, I don't have this. I also have this pattern and now I don't have it. Hmm. Oh wow, this or you may have some states, higher states. Uh, so it's like, oh, okay. So gradually, this love becomes like the most important thing. So this becomes the most important thing in our life, this interest in this stuff. And, and then the, the, that's a good thing because then the, I don't know, they say in the Bible, seek and you shall find. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's really interested. All right, so how about we uh, kind of switch now into uh, some experiential work? Uh, all right.